Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Andrew Kirkoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're talking about my running back rankings tier list for the 2023 fantasy football season. Over the course of today's episode, I'm going to be mentioning my top 50 running back rankings as I'll present statistics and data that I've gathered this offseason in order to justify those rankings. Now, with 50 running backs to talk about, I have to be relatively concise with every single one. Otherwise, we'll be here for hours. But you all know how much I love to go ahead and rattle off statistics in order to give you the broad scope upside of many of these fantasy prospects as we approach our upcoming drafts. Now, before we get into today's content, a couple reminders. If you have not yet already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're making daily fantasy football content for the entirety of the 2023 season with the singular purpose of trying to help you win a fantasy football championship. So whether it's the running back tier list, wide receiver, tight end, quarterback in the coming days, all of that in order to help you. Now, for those of you who are trying to stay up to date on said rankings for not only this offseason, for, for the entirety of the 2023 season, be sure to travel down to the description of the video and check out Underdog Fantasy. At this current moment in time, if you sign up using code Andrew and make a first-time deposit minimum of $10, not only you're going to get the deposit match that is up to $100, you're also going to get my 2023 Fantasy Football Draft Guide and Rankings. This draft guide consists of hundreds of hours of my efforts that I've collected data, statistics that justify my methodology as to how I approach my draft and draft at specific positions, whether a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, or tight end. The rankings are by position, by tier, with flex, half PPR, full PPR, four point per passing touchdown, six point per passing touchdown. All of that updated every single week. So regardless of when you're drafting this upcoming season, you have an advantage upon your league mates. But the advantages don't stop there as every single Sunday morning throughout the entirety of the upcoming season, weeks one through 18, I will send you a personal email with rankings for that given week, half PPR, full PPR, by position, by tier, so we can help you win a fantasy football championship. So take advantage of the opportunity on hand. Use code Andrew. For those of you who are wondering if you're eligible to help me help you, the map on the left side of the screen determines your eligibility to go ahead, start drafting today, gathering experience via the many best ball drafts, via Underdog Fantasy, get my rankings, and start helping yourself win a fantasy football championship for 2023. Now, the final announcement I wanted to make before we get into today's content is in regards to the 1.01 brand the official merchandise line of the Andrew Kirikoff YouTube channel. At this current moment in time, you guys can head on over to andrewkirikoffshop.com to not only continue to support the channel, but rep greetings and salutations on your chest like I currently am. Like I've mentioned in the last couple days, the entire purpose of this merchandise line is to continue to provide high quality product that is comfortable and stylish for your most stressful of upcoming fantasy football Sundays for the entirety of the 2023 season. So whether it's one of the hoodies like I'm wearing, whether it's the crew necks, the long sleeve tees, bucket hats, you know, beanies, ball caps, sweatpants, shorts, all of it high quality products for this upcoming season. So for those of you interested to continue to support the channel and rep greetings and salutations, the 1.01 brand, be sure to check out the link down in the description. Again, that's andrewkirikoffshop.com. And at this current moment in time, as you guys can see the tie-dye hoodies on screen, they are in limited quantity. They are a special edition and they're going to run out quickly. So be sure to get your hands on that today. Thank you very much for supporting the Andrew Kirikoff YouTube channel and the 1.01 brand. Okay, let's get into talking about the running back position. A reminder, there are going to be timestamps down in the description if you're looking for a specific running back. And all rankings for today's episode are for a half PPR scoring format, meeting everyone in the middle, whether you play in a standard league or a full PPR league. So let's talk about Christian McCaffrey, the only running back that I have in the S tier this upcoming season. Now, as soon as Christian McCaffrey was traded to the San Francisco 49ers, he immediately became the number one running back in fantasy football. From week seven through 18, held the number one overall ranking in terms of a fantasy point per game average. And in the seven games last season that he played with Brock Purdy, whether regular season or postseason, in which Christian McCaffrey played 50% or more of the offensive snaps, seven different instances of this, he was averaging 21.73 fantasy points per game. Overall, he's got an incredibly high upside, and his floor of production is certainly high as well. That's why he's the only running back in this S tier. In the last 13 games that Christian McCaffrey has not found the end zone, he's still averaging 16.38 fantasy points per game. Now, for those of you who say, well, Andrew, the greatest ability is availability. Christian McCaffrey has put all those injury questions to rest as he played 20 consecutive games last season, regular season and postseason combined. Christian McCaffrey, by far and away, the only player in the S tier, my number one ranked running back going into 2023. Let's move on to Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler in the last two years has been the number one and the number two ranked running back in fantasy football. Thanks to obviously the work that he has done in the receiving game, but of course, finding the end zone 38 times in the last 33 games and averaging 19.03 half PPR fantasy points per game over the course of those last 33 games from 2021 through 2022. Austin Eckler is one of one. 
I mean, what he was able to accomplish last season with 107 receptions was historic. That's the second most receptions by a running back in a singular season, only behind the record that, of course, Christian McCaffrey set back in 2019. Containing a 29.13% target percentage last season is a very rare number for Austin Eckler, and we do not expect him to repeat that. As we saw, Mike Williams and Keenan Allen both missed significant time last season. I mean, Mike Williams missed five games. Keenan Allen missed essentially nine games. Now, when we go into this upcoming year with a healthy offensive line, healthy wide receivers, healthy Justin Herbert, and of course, Kellen Moore as their new offensive coordinator with no other backfield competition, we're still expecting Austin Eckler to be an incredible overall fantasy producer, but we're not expecting those numbers that we saw last year in the receiving game. Therefore, he begins our A tier. Moving on, let's talk about another running back that we love, the rookie running back out of Texas, B. John Robinson. Again, when you look at the history of running backs that were selected as high as B. John Robinson was in the 2023 draft, again, eighth overall amongst all players, in the last decade of fantasy football, running backs selected in the top eight picks of their respective draft the only other running backs consist of Saquon Barkley, Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey, and Ezekiel Elliott. Those running backs in their careers, their rookie season, averaged 260 plus fantasy points in a half PPR scoring format. The sky is the limit for Bijan Robinson, especially considering he's joining an organization which is a perfect match behind an elite offensive line and with play caller Arthur Smith as the head coach. They're going to run the ball. In fact, this team had the second most running back rushing attempts amongst all teams last season in the National Football League, which led to the most running back rushing yards amongst all teams. Now, as you approach this upcoming season with Desmond Ritter as a starting quarterback, we're going to see a lot of utilization of Bijan Robinson. In the last four games in which Desmond Ritter was the starting quarterback of the Falcons last season, this team ran the ball with their running backs 31 times per game and targeted them 6.75 times per game. I understand Tyler Algier and Cordero Patterson are still in the equation, but B. John Robinson is the most talented back in this backfield and is going to see a boatload of opportunities, which leads to fantasy success. Moving on, let's talk about Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb going into this year, again, is going to be a fantastic fantasy prospect because he's always been. The consistency that he has demonstrated throughout his entire career, averaging over five yards per Gary every single season, is one of one. In the last two seasons, he's the number one running back in terms of yards after contact per attempt, averaging 3.87 at a minimum of 400 attempts. He is hyper efficient and now has a full backfield of opportunity to himself. In the last three seasons, since Kevin Stefanski became the head coach and primary play caller of this offense, in games in which Nick Chubb has had 50% or more of the offensive snaps, he's getting 19 and a half touches per game and averaging 17.25 half PPR fantasy points per game. With no more Kareem Hunt, no more Dernis Johnson, you have Ford and Kelly, who as a combined duo have only 70 career offensive snaps played. Nick Chubb has his entire backfield to himself and you incorporate him in the receiving game, an offense that over the course of the last three seasons, only targeted Nick Chubb amongst all running backs 31% of the time. If he continues to get an even bigger target share within this backfield, his, his overall fantasy upside is absolutely going to make him a top five running back once again. Moving on to Derrick Henry, the next running back we wanted to mention. Derrick Henry, again, another one of these consistent running backs, often being slept on because of his age and because of the team he's associated with, but he continues to find success regardless. In the last three healthy seasons has been the number three, two and four ranked running back overall in a half PPR scoring format. In 2021, prior to his season ending injury was the number one running back in fantasy football and it wasn't even close. Since Ryan Tannehill has taken over the starting quarterback job of this organization, Derrick Henry has taken steps forward, averaging 20.38 fantasy points per game, scoring 60 total touchdowns, whether it's rushing, receiving, or passing in the last 55 games that he's participated in, in an offense that since 2018, regardless of having three different offensive coordinators, have ran the ball the most amongst all teams at the running back position. Now, as we approach the 2023 season and see Derrick Henry's receiving numbers continue to go up, setting career highs in targets, receptions, and receiving yards last year, if those numbers continue to increase, we have a three down back regardless of what his offensive line looks like because it has been awful in seasons past with all of these variables taken into account and his upcoming strength of schedule being one of the easiest amongst all running backs in the National Football League, Derrick Henry's going to have himself a fantastic 2023 year. Let's move on to Tony Pollard, the next running back I wanted to mention. You guys know how much I love Tony Pollard. I've mentioned him all offseason. Opportunity leads to success in fantasy football. We know that. And what Tony Pollard is going to have a lot of this season is opportunity because of the absence of Ezekiel Elliott. In Tony Pollard's career since 2019, in games in which he's played 50% or more of the offensive snaps, averaging 18.16 fantasy points per game. In the three games in his career in which Ezekiel Elliott did not participate because he's been injured, Tony Pollard has averaged 27.23 fantasy points per game. 
We're talking about Ezekiel Elliott, a running back who had 231 rushing attempts and 12 rushing touchdowns last season for the Cowboys organization, who is no longer in the mix. We're talking about 16 red zone rushing attempts inside the five yard line last year that led to nine rushing touchdowns that are available for grabs. And who's going to compete with Tony Pollard for those opportunities? There's no one. I absolutely believe Tony Pollard has an extremely high upside. And unless they bring in someone to compete for touches, he's going to be an absolute monster for fantasy purposes and has the upside of competing for a top three standing. Moving on to the final running back of this A tier, we have Saquon Barkley. Again, unimpeded volume of opportunity at the running back position is extremely valuable. And this is why we've mentioned all these running backs thus far, because they have elite levels of opportunity and aren't being contested. In the case of Saquon Barkley, someone who last season was able to maintain 76% of the running back opportunities within this backfield. We're talking about 76% of the total targets and attempts combined. Amongst all running backs since 2018, there have been 11 in which they have been able to surpass 70 plus percent of those running back opportunities. All of those running backs able to maintain a top 10 standing in those given seasons over the course of the last five years. We're talking about a running back who last season, when given 15 or more touches in a game, he was given that opportunity 14 of his 16 games. So nearly 90% of the time, averaging 17.39 fantasy points per game. Obviously, we know that his overall utilization in the receiving game Amongst all running backs, 6th in targets, 7th in receptions, 5th in routes run. We know that, of course, with a mobile quarterback, you're likely going to see less targets. And with Daniel Jones competing with red zone rushing attempts, it's going to hurt Saquon Barkley. But overall, again, an incredible prospect that has extremely high upside, breakaway ability, and can do everything on the field for this organization. All right, moving on to the B tier, we're going to begin with Joe Mixon. Now, when we're talking about a top-tier offense with zero running back competition, when I think of running backs, Joe Mixon comes to mind because, quite frankly, that's the situation we have. With Samaj P. Ryan no longer within this offense and the Cincinnati Bengals continuing the trend in a positive direction year over year, we're talking about a running back that in the last two seasons has averaged 20.13 touches per game and 15.88 fantasy points per game. Last season, set career highs in terms of targets and receptions, and on a full 17-game pace, would have had 91 targets and 73 receptions. When you look at running backs over the course of the last decade that have surpassed 200 rushing attempts and 60 receptions in a year, 18 of those 22 running backs were top five in their given season. Joe Mixon has a lot of upside going into this upcoming year with unimpeded volume of opportunity going in his direction. Now, another running back that I wanted to mention is, of course, Najee Harris. Another running back that even though he has Jalen Warren breathing down his neck, getting opportunities, as soon as we saw a healthy Najee Harris last season, there was a huge difference maker in comparison to weeks one through five. From week seven through 18 of last season, after he took the plate out of his shoe, obviously was dealing with a Liz Frank injury that he mentioned that he sustained during the preseason of last year. As soon as he took out that plate, Henceforth was the number nine overall running back in fantasy football, 12th in terms of fantasy points per game on average, and was averaging 13.41 fantasy points per game in a half PPR scoring format. When we talk about the history of Steelers running backs, over the course of the last decade, whether it has been Najee Harris, Le'Veon Bell, D'Angelo Williams, or even James Conner, this team has always wanted to give their running backs or one singular workhorse back majority of the opportunity that leads to majority of the fantasy points. In fact, there's only been one scenario in the past decade in which a starting running back of this organization has not consisted of 73% or more of the overall backfield fantasy points contributed. Last season, we saw a lot of red zone woes for a guy like Najee Harris. Seven different instances in which he was tackled down at the one-yard line and was not able to score the follow-up touchdown. Another player on his team did so. I think Najee Harris, often being slept on, is a fantastic prospect in an offense that is certainly trending in the right direction. Now let's talk about Jonathan Taylor, a player that is relatively... I guess controversial at this current moment in time, there is a lot of rumors. We don't know where he's going to be traded, whether it's, you know, him landing back with the Indianapolis Colts, signing a you know, brand new contract and being able to put everything in the past. We'll have to wait and see because we know that if he's a part of the Colts, he has top five upside. He has represented that back in 2021 as he was the number one overall running back in fantasy football and back in 2020 where he was the number six overall running back in fantasy football. We know that he is a consistent producer. The question is going to be whether he's going to be a Colt this upcoming season because if he gets traded to the Cowboys, the Bills, the Dolphins, there is a conversation to be had in which Jonathan Taylor would be significantly higher ranked than where I currently have him. But with so many questions at hand and not a lot of answers in regards to his scenario, I'm just forced to leave him in this current designated spot. He will gain overall ranks if he starts practicing and joins a new organization or signs a contract and set, definitely be at the top of this B tier, if not in the A tier. But at this current moment in time, this is where we'll leave Jonathan Taylor, a player that we know from 2020 through 2022, when given 
50% or more of the offensive snaps. He's averaged 19.21 fantasy points per game throughout his entire career. He's averaged 5.08 yards per carry. He's an incredible running back just at this current moment in time. A lot of questions unanswered. Now, another running back that we're still a little bit skeptical on as to whether he's going to land with the Raiders and end up practicing and playing for the organization is Josh Jacobs. And unfortunately, we are seeing a lot of questions as to potentially him being traded and whether he's going to rejoin this organization. Currently, he was offered the franchise tag. He did not sign that deal. And everything is in limbo. You got to remember, even though he's coming off his best statistical season, Josh Jacobs has been an RB1 every single season of his career. Going back to 2019, prior to the injury, was RB11. 2020 was RB8. 2021, after the injury, was RB7. And in 2022, was the RB3. Incredible numbers over the course of his four years. 47 of his 60 games consisting of 15 or more touches, averaging nearly 17 fantasy points per game in those instances. With setting all career highs in rushing attempts, yards, rushing touchdowns, receiving yards, and fantasy points last season, we're going to expect regression. We're not expecting you know, Josh Jacobs to return to form, and especially with all this turmoil within the organization or potentially being moved to a different organization, perhaps be a trade, Dolphins, Cowboys, Bills. At this current moment in time, Josh Jacobs has the ability to climb in my rankings, but currently sits here because of all these unanswered questions. All right, moving on to the C tier. We begin with Travis Etienne, the 12th ranked running back in my rankings this season. Now, as soon as we saw James Robinson get eliminated from the overall rotation last year for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Travis Etienne took over. The remainder of the season without James Robinson was averaging 18.6 touches per game and 13.61 fantasy points per game. With Doug Peterson as the head coach and primary play caller of this offense, we know that in the past he's been interested in a running back rotation and obviously spending a high draft capital on someone like Tank Bigsby you know, kind of brings up questions as to whether or not this rotation is going to exist. But you got to remember the Jacksonville Jaguars last season were fifth amongst all teams in running back rushing attempts and fourth amongst all teams in terms of running back opportunities with 533 opportunities given to their running backs. There is still an ability for these two running backs, Tank Bigsby and Travis Etienne to coexist and allow Travis Etienne to still be a top 12 option. Just like we have seen Aaron Jones accomplish that in the last couple years within that Green Bay organization with AJ Dillon continuing to get opportunities. Luckily for Etienne, he's highly efficient last season amongst all running backs with a minimum of 175 rushing attempts. There were 31 running backs in that case. He was number three in terms of yards per carry on average with a 5.11 yard per carry average. Incredible numbers. Now, speaking of Aaron Jones, let's talk about him as our next running back in the C tier. Aaron Jones has ranked as a top 12 running back every single since 2019. In fact, amongst all running backs in the last decade, is number two in terms of fantasy points per attempt, averaging 0.752 fantasy points per touch. That in itself is a ridiculous number. We know what kind of upside Aaron Jones has, but the whole question is, without Aaron Rodgers, and perhaps an even slightly increased role with A.J. Dillon within this offense, can we anticipate to see Aaron Jones be a top 12 you know, running back once again? I think he'll you know, kind of slide right outside of that, as this offense is going to be far less productive. Just take into account, in the last five seasons, the Green Bay Packers have had the second highest percentage of touchdown drives amongst all teams in the National Football League. 27.5% of their overall drives have led to a touchdown. That number is ridiculous. So when you take into account A.J. Dillon getting majority of the red zone work and, of course, the quarterback shift, there's going to be opportunities for Aaron Jones to represent his efficiency last season amongst all running backs with 175 rushing attempts was number one with a 5.26 yard per carry average in the last four seasons within this organization has been the number two target in terms of receptions and targets. Overall, he's a huge part of this offense. That's not going to change. But Aaron Jones, without Aaron Rodgers and more A.J. Dillon, kind of slides down the board a tad bit. Moving on, let's talk about Jameer Gibbs, a rookie running back. Now, when we talk about the history of rookie running backs, similar to Bijan Robinson, there is a conversation to be had in regards to what is the upside of Jameer Gibbs. I mean, when you look at running backs over the course of the last decade who have been drafted in the top 12 of their respective draft, we're talking about running backs who have averaged over 250 fantasy points in their rookie season. There is a lot of potential for Jameer Gibbs. It's just a matter of how this coaching staff wants to utilize Jameer Gibbs within this offense. Again, you got to remember Dan Campbell is a part of the Sean Payton coaching tree. He was a part of that organization as a tight ends coach in 2017 when Alvin Kamara was a rookie and was dominating alongside a guy like Mark Ingram. And that's what I'm anticipating to see this upcoming year. Jameer Gibbs is going to be the Alvin Kamara of this offense and David Montgomery is going to be the Mark Ingram. And they're both going to be relevant because there's a potential in which 
outside of Amon Ross St. Brown, who else is going to catch the ball? Who is a, a contesting target getter within this offense? Josh Reynolds? Marvin Jones Jr.? I don't think so. There is a very high likelihood that if a healthy Jameer Gibbs completes the season, 70 receptions is on the table. And if that's going to be the case, and all the history we've seen at the running back position, if he's highly effective on the ground and is able to find the end zone a handful of times, he is very easily going to be in this top 15 running back conversation. Moving on to Miles Sanders, a running back that I love. In terms of all running backs this offseason who were free agents, he signed the biggest contract amongst all of them, primarily because last season, double-digit touchdowns, over 1,200 rushing yards, had an incredible year. Now he joins Frank Wright and this Carolina Panthers offense. For those of you who remember, Frank Wright has been the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts from 2018 to last year, obviously prior to him being alleviated of his job and fired. Prior to his firing, this team, the Indianapolis Colts, from 2018 through 2022, were number two in terms of running back rushing attempts over the course of that span of time. And of course, we saw a lot of running backs find success within this offense, whether it be Marlon Mack, Jonathan Taylor, Naeem Hines. So going into this upcoming season, with Deuce Staley as the running backs coach of this organization, a former Eagles coach and, of course, a Detroit Lions coach last season, we are going to see a lot of targets go in the direction of Miles Sanders because Deuce Staley was the Eagles running back coach back in the first two seasons of Miles Sanders' career. In those two seasons, 63 targets, 52 targets. We know he's going to get opportunity. He's going to be a three-down back. They paid him a lot of money to come into this organization. He's going to have to carry the load. Throughout Miles Sanders' entire career, in games in which he's given 15 or more opportunities, in a half PPR averaging 14.9 fantasy points per game, Incredible opportunity for a running back joining this organization. Moving on, let's talk about Ramondre Stevenson. There's still a lot of questions to be answered in regards to what Ezekiel Elliott provides. We are anticipating that he's going to be the Damian Harris of this offense. And if that's going to be the case, Damian Harris last season, you got to remember, was averaging about 11.4 rushing attempts per game prior to his injury. After the injury, Ramondre Stevenson absolutely took over and was able to launch himself into this top you know, 12 running back conversation. But now with another running back in the mix, it does become difficult. Even though in the last two seasons when Ramondre Stevenson has been given 15 or more touches in a game, he's averaging 16.16 fantasy points per game, it is still difficult to see if he's going to be able to get all the red zone rushing attempts, if he's going to get all the short yardage work that we require him to get in order to be fantasy relevant. Luckily, Mac Jones has made it easier for Ramondre Stevenson. Last season in the 13 games in which Mac Jones was healthy, he targeted his running backs 7.31 times per game. Stevenson, obviously, amongst all running backs last season, had the third most targets and fourth most receptions. If those numbers continue with his hyper-efficiency on the ground with a 4.95 yard per carry average, fifth amongst all running backs with 100 attempts minimum last year, I expect Ramondre Stevenson to absolutely be an RB2 or potentially get into that low-end RB1 conversation. Moving on to Alexander Madison, the final running back in the C tier. Alexander Madison fills in for Dalvin Cook, a running back who has finished as RB5, 3, 15, and 10. The only reason... Dalvin Cook in that one year finishes RB15 is because he missed a significant amount of time due to injury. Now, in those absences, Alexander Madison has stepped up and been a monster. In Alexander Madison's six career starts, he's averaged 19.5 attempts per game and 18.13 fantasy points per game. And I understand many of you look towards his games and say, well, he played against all-time bad defenses, taking on defenses like the Seattle Seahawks and or the Detroit Lions, defenses that could not stop a soul in the running game. I understand that. But luckily, Alexander Madison going into 2023 has the easiest strength of schedule at the running back position and additionally has the highest graded offensive line in terms of run blocking grades going into 2023 according to Pro Football Focus. And in terms of continuity, this offensive line have all five starters returning. That is extremely rare. And going into this upcoming season, like we've heard Kevin O'Connell, the head coach of this team, say, they've talked about him being a three-down back and even the offensive coordinator has been quoted to say, Maybe people don't realize just how good Alexander Madison is. And I'm expecting him to have a great year. Moving on to our D tier, we have David Montgomery. David Montgomery is one of my favorite running backs to draft because he is being slept on. And the value in which you can get him based on his current ADP is ridiculous. We have heard Dan Campbell say, and I quote, I think we need a back that when push comes to shove, he can carry the load. Somebody that we feel we can give the ball to 20 to 25 times in a game potentially. That is exactly what David Montgomery is as he fills in for the Jamal Williams role. You got to remember Jamal Williams last season with only playing 40% of the snaps had 262 rushing attempts, 1,000 plus rushing yards and 17 rushing touchdowns. He led all running backs in terms of every single statistical category in the red zone, attempts, touchdowns, yards, etc. We are going to continue to see David Montgomery utilized in this capacity because in my opinion, he's a better running back athletically. He can do more in the receiving game. And absolutely, if given opportunity at the clip in which Jamal Williams got last season, 11 games of 15 or more rushing attempts, 
Throughout his entire career, David Montgomery, in games in which he's been given 15 or more rushing attempts, is averaging 14.93 fantasy points per game behind one of the best offensive lines and having one of the easiest strength of schedules. I understand Jameer Gibbs is going to feast, but so is David Montgomery. Moving on, let's talk about Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker obviously benefited from the fact last season that you know Rashad Penny once again had a season-ending injury. It is unfortunate to see Rashad Penny have to deal with that in his career, but it birthed Kenneth Walker and what we you know witnessed last season, which was incredible. From week five through the playoffs, Kenneth Walker was averaging 20.58 touches per game and 15.69 fantasy points per game. Overall, throughout that span of time, was the number seven overall running back in terms of a fantasy point per game average. We saw incredible production, yet, unfortunately, this organization spent a second round pick on Zach Charbonnet out of UCLA. And there's going to be a rotation in this backfield because Charbonnet is a very talented back and has proven that in college and will be able to demonstrate that in the National Football League. Within an organization like the Seahawks, who had the 20th most running back rushing attempts last season, 350 total, if you go ahead and take that 20 and a half rushing attempt average that we saw Kenneth Walker be able to accumulate last season and you expand that upon 17 games, I, I think that this team's going to either have to run the ball far more or they're going to have to give Zach Charbonnet far less touches than we're anticipating. Otherwise, Kenneth Walker is not going to be able to accumulate 20 touches per game. He's going to have to see far less opportunity, which leads to far less fantasy points, which is why he slid down the board in comparison to other potential rankings and where he finished last season. Otherwise, we know he's going to be a 1,000-yard running back and could very easily score seven rushing touchdowns. Outside of that, everything goes in the direction of Charbonnet in my mind. Moving on. Let's talk about Brees Hall coming off the ACL injury. Even though there are questions as to how this backfield is going to rotate with Dalvin Cook obviously being signed recently, we're talking about one of the more talented running backs in the National Football League. A guy that last season from weeks one through six was averaging 15.4 fantasy points per game and was the number six overall running back prior to his ACL tear. In games in which he played with 50% or more of the offensive snaps last season, was averaging 18.2 fantasy points per game. Since 2019, when we've seen running backs been able to accumulate 150 rushing attempts and 40 receptions in a year. 45 of those 47 running backs have been able to compete and be top 24 running backs within their given season in a half PPR scoring format. So I expect him to be a top 24 running back. And what really is going to hold him back is his own body. If we can see him stay healthy for the entirety of the year, top 24 is absolutely on the table, if not better. Because the last three times we have seen a running back recently, Dalvin Cook, Saquon Barkley, J.K. Dobbins returned from ACL injuries. The primary reason they weren't able to rank highly their first season back from the ACL, ranking as RB29, 32, and 52, is because they got injured and missed significant time during the season. We got to hope that that's not going to be the case for Brees Hall. Moving on, we have Damian Pierce. Amongst all running backs at this point, it is going to be difficult in drafts to find a running back that is going to get as many touches as Damian Pierce as late as you can potentially draft him at his current ADP. From weeks 1 through 14 of last season, he was the number 15 running back prior to his injury, was number 21 in terms of fantasy points per game on average. In games in which he played 65% or more of the offensive snaps, averaged 20.86 touches per game and 13.3 fantasy points per game. He handled 86% of the rushing attempts and 42% of the targets. And even with Devin Singletary in this rotation, Devin Singletary can have 20% of the rushing attempts and 40% of the targets. That's not going to impede upon the potential success of Damian Pierce, who is a workhorse back. And amongst all the remaining running backs that I'm going to mention, probably is going to average the most touches amongst all of them going into this upcoming year behind an improved offensive line. And with an offensive coordinator that is from the Kyle Shanahan tree of coaching, there could be a far better rushing scheme with an improved offensive line going into this year. Moving on, let's talk about J.K. Dobbins. When J.K. Dobbins is fully healthy, he is a special running back. I mean, you go back to 2020, his rookie season was averaging 6.0 yards per carry on average, was number one amongst all running backs with 100 attempts minimum. Last season, from weeks 14 through the playoffs, was averaging 15 touches per game and 13 fantasy points per game with a 6.56 yard per carry average. Despite the fact that he has been hobbled, he was still extremely effective. And going into this year, another year removed from that ACL, we should see J.K. Dobbins dominate. Now, this has been a run-first team in the past with Lamar Jackson, Greg Roman as their offense quarter, but they're changing things up. It is no longer going to be Greg Roman calling the plays. It's going to be Todd Monken. So hopefully, we're going to see less stacked boxes because last season, amongst all running backs in the National Football League, J.K. Dobbins faced eight-plus defenders 36% of the time, which was the fourth highest rate amongst all running backs in the National Football League. That is a ridiculously high number. If this offense can air it out, and give the ability for this offensive line to have a little bit less pressure on them so they can make some running lanes and allow J.K. Dobbins to get back to form, I'm expecting him to be a fantastic running back option within a very powerful offense. Moving on, let's talk about Cam Akers, another running back that dealt with injuries, but last season, late dominated. Weeks 1 through 12, 
was an absolute disaster, averaging 3.8 fantasy points per game. That eventually, after the Rams ran through every single running back and decided, all right, let's go back to the well of Cam Akers, from weeks 13 through 18, averaged 19.17 touches per game and 16.77 fantasy points per game. There is a lack of competition in this backfield. And even though Cam Akers is not going to get a lot of receiving work, the fact that he's competing with Kieran Williams and Zach Evans, a fifth and a sixth round pick, I don't expect him to get a lot of touches siphoned from him. Last season, in the back end of the year, weeks 13 through 18, in the games in which, of course, there was no Matthew Stafford and there's no other running back competing with him, Cam Akers saw a lot of work on third downs. In fact, ran 134 routes and only was targeted 12 times. So if, in fact, we see those numbers just very slightly increase, Cam Akers should be a fantastic running back within an offense that absolutely will continue to give him the ball on a consistent basis. Moving on, let's talk about the beginning of each year. We're talking about James Conner. James Conner, without any sort of backfield competition, is one of the best running backs in fantasy football. In 2021, with no backfield competition, after Chase Edmonds left due to an injury, we saw James Conner average 23.58 fantasy points per game. In 2022, when Eno Benjamin left due to injury, we saw James Conner average 17.86 fantasy points per game. In the last two years, James Conner playing 70 plus percent of the offensive snaps, averaging 19.43 fantasy points per game. And even though many people look at James Conner and think, well, this is an offense that is going to be awful. They're expected to win the least amount of games in the National Football League. What's the difference between that potential, you know, 2023 campaign and what the Cardinals did last season? A 4-13 and football team that was awful and had an even worse offensive line last season. The only thing I'm worried about with James Conner is him staying healthy. And if, in fact, he does, you know, find an injury, hopefully they don't shut him down early in the season trying to get other running back touches. That's my only concern and why he kind of drops down the overall rankings list, but still a top 24 player. Let's move on to Rashad White. Speaking of a top 24 player, in my opinion, there is a very good likelihood that Rashad White finishes a top 24 back because in the last four seasons, running backs in which they have had 150 plus rushing attempts and 40 receptions in a season, 45 of those 47 running backs that were eligible were top 24 in their given year. The only running backs who were not capable of accomplishing that was Miles Gaskin and Saquon Barkley, both in 2021, both of them hyper inefficient with their overall touches, whether on the ground or through the air. That was the year where Saquon was coming back from that ACL, dealt with the ankle injury, was a disaster. I anticipate to see Rashad White with no backfield competition dealing with guys like Keyshawn Vaughn and Chase Edmonds to be a dominant option within this offense and continue to get a lot of touches on the ground through the air with no more Leonard Fournette. The sky's the limit for Rashad White. Moving on, let's talk about DeAndre Swift. He is in an offense that is behind one of the best offensive lines, if not the best offensive line in the National Football League with Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, two future Hall of Famers. This is going to be an offensive line that is going to move people. And if DeAndre Swift is healthy and ready to go, he absolutely, without a doubt, can be an even better running back than where he's currently ranked on screen. He has the upside of top 12 standing because he's demonstrated that in seasons past. You go back to 2021 when DeAndre Swift was treated like a workhorse back, averaging 19 touches per game, was averaging 15.8 fantasy points per game with this Lions offense. It was the number seven overall back within that span of time. When you're filling in for Miles Sanders, who had 260 rushing attempts, over almost 1,300 rushing yards, 11 rushing touchdowns, and was the number 13 overall running back in fantasy football. I understand that Swift is highly benefited off the fact that he's had 48, 62, and 46 receptions each of the last three years. Those are great numbers. But going into this year, if they give him the rushing attempt and treat him like the workhorse back of this offense, which I'm anticipating could very easily be the case, DeAndre Swift is going to be far higher ranked if he stays healthy than where I currently have him. Moving on to Javante Williams. Speaking of you know staying healthy, Javante Williams had a very significant knee injury. The fact that he is saying he's 100% and he's back and in action is unbelievable because we know what Sean Payton, Joe Lombardi, the head coach and offensive coordinator of the Denver Broncos presents. You go back to 2018 through 2021, the New Orleans Saints with Sean Payton, they targeted their running backs the third most times. You go back to 2021 through 2022, Los Angeles Chargers with Joe Lombardi as their offensive coordinator. They targeted their running backs the most times amongst all teams in the National Football League. Obviously, Alvin Kamara, Austin Eckler. Can we get Javante Williams into this role? We know that with the free agent signings that this team has made, bringing in two starting offensive linemen, a great run blocking tight end, and Samaj P. Ryan, they want to run the ball. The question is going to be, is Javante Williams going to get enough touches? Because in his career, anytime he's been given 16 or more touches in a game, averaging over 14 and a half fantasy points per game. But with Samaj P. Ryan currently active, healthy, and Javante Williams still working back from that injury, I anticipate Javante Williams to be a little bit lesser valued than where he could potentially end up, which is extremely high upside 
once healthy at a maximum capacity within an offense that loves to the target their running backs with a running back that is capable of taking advantage of those targets. Moving on, let's talk about the F tier. We begin with James Cook. James Cook is in an offense that is going to be highly contested. You have Latavius Murray, you have Josh Allen, you have Damian Harris. All players that can run the ball, especially down on the goal line. And if you're not going to get the red zone rushing attempts, you're going to pretty much be at the ceiling of production like we saw with Devin Singletary last year, who finished as RB24. Devin Singletary, again, isn't the most explosive running back in comparison to a guy like James Cook, who last season only played 29.5% of the offensive snaps, yet had 89 rushing attempts and 507 rushing yards. Amongst all running backs last season, had the third highest yard per carry average with a minimum of 50 rushing attempts with a 5.7 yard per carry average extremely efficient in games last season in which he was given 40 percent of the overall snaps or more was averaging 12 fantasy points per game we know james cook can be an incredible back it's just a matter of whether these other options within this offense are going to impede on his overall upside within the end zone moving on let's talk about alvin kamara he's obviously going to miss the first three games with the suspension and last season unfortunately did you know pretty much rank as rb18 which was significantly lower than we anticipated injuries along with Taysom hill really did throw a wrench into this entire equation. But going into this upcoming season, we're talking about a running back who is going to now have to deal with not only Taysom Hill, but Derek Carr's passing ability, and now Jamal Williams. This is a recipe that could potentially be a disaster for a guy like Alvin Kamara. That being said, in 2022, Alvin Kamara, 15 plus touches, averaging 15.47 fantasy points per game in the 10 instances where he was given 15 or more touches throughout the season. I anticipate to see that Alvin Kamara is going to get himself touches. Not a lot in the red zone. Last season, only 20 red zone rushing attempts for two rushing touchdowns. You go back to 2020, where he was the number one overall running back in fantasy football. He had 42 red zone rushing attempts, which is more than double, and 15 rushing touchdowns, which obviously allowed him to be the number one overall running back in that given year. Obviously, Derek Carr joining this offense helps because... In the last five seasons with the Las Vegas Raiders, running backs have been targeted on average 114 times per season. That led to 93 receptions, 700 plus receiving yards. There is a potential in which Alvin Kamara can get back into the receiving game. And that in itself can even out his overall production, even if he doesn't find the end zone with so much competition within this organization. Moving on to Khalil Herbert. I really love Khalil Herbert's efficiency last season was number one amongst all running backs with a 100 rushing attempts minimum with a 5.67 yard per carry average. When we talk about his overall production in terms of yards after contact per attempt, third amongst all running backs, only behind guys like Ramondre Stevenson and Tony Pollard with a 3.67 average. Opportunity leads to success in fantasy football, right? Well, Khalil Herbert in the last two seasons, when he's played 50% or more of the offensive snaps, is averaging 15 fantasy points per game and averaging 21 and a half touches per game in those instances. There's going to be a lot of opportunity going in his direction as David Montgomery is leaving behind 12 games last season in which he had 15 or more touches. With the fourth easiest strength of schedule at the running back position and the fifth highest graded offensive line in terms of run blocking, according to Pro Football Focus, I anticipate Khalil Herbert to be a fantastic running back option for fantasy purposes. Moving on to Isaiah Pacheco. Now, Isaiah Pacheco at the beginning of last season obviously was irrelevant because Clyde Edwards-Alaire was incredible from weeks one through four. Clyde Edwards-Alaire was the number four overall fantasy running back in terms of total points scored, having scored 69 fantasy points in the first four weeks. Now, Isaiah Pacheco eventually took over this offense as Clyde Edwards got injured, and from the you know, weeks 10 through the playoffs was averaging 14.92 touches per game and 11.27 fantasy points per game with a 5.09 yard per carry average, only playing 45% of the snaps. Now, my biggest concern within this offense is, of course, Isaiah Pacheco getting Clyde Edwards, a veteran running back, back into the mix. And, of course, Jarek McKinnon continuing to stay as consistent in this backfield, not only on the ground, but through the air. As an offense that was number two amongst all teams in the National Football League in terms of first half points scored, 15.5 on average. They also were the second highest scoring team in the second half with a 13.3 average, only behind the Dallas Cowboys in the second half and the Eagles in the first half. The Kansas City Chiefs are going to be a team that scored, whether it's on the ground or through the air, the opportunity is there. So Isaiah Pacheco certainly will have chances. It's just a matter of what kind of a rotation we see out of this backfield. Moving on to Dalvin Cook. Listen, Dalvin Cook has been a very good running back in his career. He is obviously on the back end of his career joining an organization to be in the mix and obviously help usher Brees Hall into the remainder of his career. But Dalvin Cook still has ability. Last season was averaging 4.47 yards per carry on average. Still finishes the number 10 overall running back in fantasy football. And when you look at the opportunity that this offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett, provides to his running backs, 
in Green Bay from 2019 through 2021 gave their running backs the eighth most opportunities. In Jacksonville, 2016 to 2018 as the offensive coordinator, running backs had the third most opportunities with that organization. Buffalo, 2013 through 2014, gave his running backs 515 opportunities and 507. There is going to be enough opportunity to go around within this offense to give Dalvin Cook value in fantasy alongside Brees Hall. Moving on, let's talk about Antonio Gibson, a running back that at this current moment in time is going to be in a rotation. And based on how current offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy wants to approach, again, the former Chiefs running backs coach from 2013 to 2017, offensive coordinator of the Chiefs from 2018 to 2022, I very much so compare Gibby to what Jarek McKinnon did. And if the Washington Commanders are going to utilize Antonio Gibson down in the red zone instead of Brian Robinson, then his current ranking is relatively low than where he could potentially end up being by the end of this upcoming season because we have seen when Antonio Gibson is given opportunity over the course of his career 50 plus percent of the offensive snaps he's averaging over 14 fantasy points per game there is going to be opportunity it's just a matter of whether or not they're going to release it from Brian Robinson and send it in the direction of Antonio Gibson to give him the higher of overall upside moving on let's talk about AJ Dillon AJ Dillon in the last two seasons has finished his RB 25 and 23 and even though that's the case I do expect him to take a little bit of a downtrot in terms of his overall production, but he could very easily still be fantasy relevant considering he is going to be the lead back on the goal line overall rushing attempts. Last season, 10 rushing attempts on the goal line for four rushing touchdowns in comparison to Aaron Jones who only had two rushing attempts on the goal line for zero rushing touchdowns. In the last two seasons, has outcarried Aaron Jones inside the five-yard line, 20 rushing attempts to eight. There is a huge disparity there and as long as we continue to see A.J. Dillon rack up the attempts, we are going to continue to see his fantasy relevance rise. In my opinion, he's one of the most valuable handcuffs in fantasy football because not only does he have weekly production in the idea that he could score a touchdown and be 12 plus fantasy points within a given week while also getting receiving work. But if anything is to happen to Aaron Jones, it immediately makes AJ Dillon a top 12 fantasy prospect, just like it would be the other way around. If anything happens to AJ Dillon, Aaron Jones is a top 12 prospect, a running back that last season amongst all in the national football league was ranked number one because 88.1% of his rushing attempts led to positive yards. Incredible player. Moving on. Talk about Brian Robinson. We were mentioning him just a moment ago in regards to Antonio Gibson. Brian Robinson last season after he came back from his injury stint from weeks 5 through 17 was averaging 16 and a half rushing attempts per game and one target per game for 9.05 fantasy points per game. His efficiency was not great but neither was the offense as a whole. If he's to find the end zone he'd be far more fantasy relevant. It's just a matter of as to how this offense wants to approach. With Sam Howell as their starting quarterback I'm anticipating this team to want to continue to run the ball first and if that's going to be the case Brian Robinson could absolutely dominate the rushing attempts once again this year making him a fantasy relevant rb3 let's move on to zach charbonnet running back drafted out of ucla he has potential but again this team used second round draft capital on him to bring him in now i will mention that there has been other instances where the seattle seahawks use high draft capital rashad penny bring him in and then sit him behind chris carson so we may end up seeing that be the case where kenneth walker may even be better than we anticipate and we're over exaggerating this you know zach charbonnet overall contributions but this is a talented running back. He can get it done on the ground or through the air. And when you look at the history of the running back position, running backs who have been selected as top 55 selections since 2018, there have been 18 of those running backs, 14 of them playing 13 or more games in their rookie year. And of those 14 running backs, 12 of them ranking top 36 within their given season. That's 86% of the time. Again, there is a lot of potential for Zach Charbonnet to join this offense, immediately make an impact as not only a running back, but as a receiver out of this backfield. Moving on, let's talk about Samaj P. Ryan, a player that last season was hyper-efficient for the Cincinnati Bengals, and that's why he earned a job within the Broncos organization. In the two weeks in which Joe Mixon was completely absent, we saw Samaj P. Ryan averaging 24 touches per game and 17.9 fantasy points per game. In games last season in which he had 10 or more touches, averaging 19.28 fantasy points per game. Javante Williams is obviously returning from an extreme knee injury, ACL, LCL, other structural damage. If, in fact, it's going to slow him down, Samaj P. Ryan absolutely can be an RB3 based on the offense, his opportunity not only on the ground but in the receiving game, and the likelihood of Sean Payton and Joe Lombardi wanting to utilize multiple running backs like they have in the past. Moving on, let's talk about Tier H. We have Rashad Penny here. Since 2018, Rashad Penny has only played 40 of his 82 eligible games. 
we have seen a lot of opportunity go in the direction of other running backs in this backfield because, again, Rashad Penny has not been able to stay healthy. But when he has, in the 16 games where he's been given 10 or more opportunities, averaging 15 and a half fantasy points per game. In games in which he's been able to get 15 or more opportunities in a game, averaging 21 fantasy points per game. He is a hyper-efficient running back that last season was number one amongst all running backs with 50 attempts minimum with a 6.07 yard per carry average. Rashad Penny is special. But can he stay healthy? That's going to be the question. And I believe that DeAndre Swift is going to be the starter to begin the season. So Rashad Penny is going to get himself touches, but it's going to require something to happen to DeAndre Swift, specifically missing time for Rashad Penny to be given an opportunity to run behind the best offensive line in the National Football League. Moving on, let's talk about Elijah Mitchell. In my opinion, he's the most valuable handcuff in all of fantasy football because he is the running back right behind Christian McCaffrey, who is the only player in my S tier. He's a running back that back in 2021 was trusted by Cal Shanahan, in the 11 games he played throughout the regular season, was averaging 20 and a half touches per game. Last season, amongst all running backs with 45 attempts minimum, was number one in terms of a yard per carry average, 6.2. Unbelievable efficiency. And even in the games in which he returned and was healthy last season, with Christian McCaffrey in the backfield, was averaging 11 and a half rushing attempts per game. There is potential for Elijah Mitchell to be a standalone flex potential value. Obviously, it's going to be a matter of whether you can predict the games in which he's going to be valuable, but outside of that, the most valuable handcuff in all of fantasy football. Moving on to Tyler Algier, another one of these running backs that has proven in the past that they can be efficient. Last season, in the final four weeks of the Atlanta Falcons season, was averaging 21 touches per game and 16.33 fantasy points per game and was a fantasy playoff hero. Last season was hyper efficient with a 4.93 yard per carry average and 3.58 yards after contact per attempt. Overall, amongst all running backs in the National Football League, had the 8th most yards after contact, 8th most missed tackles forced, 9th most attempts of 15 or more rushing yards within an attempt. Of all the running backs that you would have imagined, Tyler Algier was not the guy that I anticipated to have an incredible year as such, but he did. He's going to get touches within this offense regardless of Bijan Robinson's existence and presence. Tyler Algier is going to get himself 10 touches a game, just a matter of how efficient he'll be and how much utilization he gets down on the goal line as to what his fantasy upside looks like. Moving on to Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke joins an offense that obviously just needs someone to run the ball 10 times per game. They want to alleviate some of the pressure on Ramondre Stevenson's shoulders so that Ramondre Stevenson can not only be the early down back, but it can also get himself touches on the goal line and receiving work. But that being said, there's going to be contributions that have to be given to Ezekiel Elliott. And when they do, it's going to take away from Andre Stevenson. Now, as you join this offense, as he primarily takes over the role of Damien Harris from last season, Damien Harris prior to his injury from weeks one through four last year was averaging 15 touches per game, 12.25 fantasy points per game, and was a pretty good overall fantasy back. Now, are we going to see the efficiency there from Ezekiel Elliott? I doubt it, as he was hyper inefficient last year and pretty much survived out the fact that he scored a touchdown in nine consecutive games last year. It is highly unlikely for that streak to occur this year within the New England Patriots offense. Nonetheless, Ezekiel Elliott, a handcuff that certainly has value down near the goal line and in standard formats. Moving on, let's talk about Raheem Mostert, a running back that typically I want to avoid, but again... It has to do with the fact that this team wants to trade for a running back. We hear so many rumors about them going after guys like Jonathan Taylor or Josh Jacobs this offseason or Dalvin Cook. I understand that Raheem Mostert will probably be the you know four most experienced within this backfield. Obviously has been with the 49ers and Mike McDaniel for a while. Going over to the Miami Dolphins, it's a quick transition and he performed well last season. Therefore, he is the lead back of this team and when given opportunity, will be able to deliver for fantasy purposes. It's just a matter of how this rotation is going to you know kind of unfold itself over the you know course of this season when a chain gets healthy and what we end up seeing from Jeff Wilson. Moving on to Jarek McKinnon. Jarek McKinnon, speaking of a streak of you know touchdowns when we mentioned it with Ezekiel Elliott just moments ago, last season from weeks 13 through 18, Jarek McKinnon had a six-game streak of scoring one receiving touchdown minimum throughout that span of time was dominating and averaging 11.38 fantasy points per game while getting 42 receptions and 59 overall rushing attempts from weeks 10 through the playoffs. There is going to be a span of time this year where you know, McKinnon's going to steal value from Pacheco and, of course, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. As to how consistent that's going to be, I think it's going to be far less than what we witnessed last season, but nonetheless still present. Moving on. Let's move on to a player by the name of Damian Harris, a running back that, again, is joining an organization who wants to run the ball more outside of their quarterback position. Obviously, they already have James Cook. Damian Harris is a handcuff. I don't think he's going to get a dominant load of the red zone rushing upside, and with that being the case, he'll probably have to live and die 
on those touchdowns. If he can score, he can score more than 10 fantasy points in a week. If he doesn't, he's not going to get much receiving work, even though he has been efficient with his rushing attempts over his career. But it's difficult for him to go ahead and coexist with James Cook and, of course, Josh Allen within this offense. Therefore, he sits in the I tier. Moving on to Devon A. Chain, the next running back I wanted to mention. This is a running back that has incredible speeds, just like a Raheem Mostert. This is a running back that can hit the edge on their offensive scheme where it's a lot of you know outside zone, you hit the corner with a running back that ran a 4-3-2 40-yard dash speed. That's why A-Chain has so much upside and why people believe that he can immediately make an impact if, in fact, these other running backs are just kind of cycled out of the rotation. That being said, it's going to take a while for this rotation to kind of figure itself out. Therefore, he's kind of a handcuff lottery ticket amongst all as a rookie running back going into this upcoming season. Moving on, let's talk about Jalen Warren. Jalen Warren presents value, but I barely think he's going to be able to dig into the work that kind of Najee Harris presents because as soon as Najee Harris was healthy from week 6 through 18 of last season, Najee Harris was averaging 20 touches per game. So Jalen Warren, yes, is going to get touches. He kind of reminds me of an early Austin Eckler when Melvin Gordon was dominating. There may be upside for him to get more receiving work, but outside of that, I don't think it's going to be able to sustain him to be anything more valuable than just a handcuff. Moving on to Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams will be able to benefit from the first three games of the season. After the first three games of the season are done and we have Alvin Kamara back into the rotation, we're going to see Jamal Williams probably kind of have to live and die by touchdowns, similar to a guy like Damian Harris. So the fact that he, in the first three weeks of the season, takes on Titans, Panthers, and Packers. I like the Panthers and Packers matchup. I don't like playing against the Titans run-stopping defense. Outside of that, it would require an injury to Alvin Kamara. Therefore, he is a handcuff within this offense. Moving on. Let's talk about Devin Singletary. He is going to get himself a good amount of receiving work within this offense, considering we'll probably see him handle about, 30, about maybe 20, 25% of the overall running back rushing attempts and then maybe 40% of the receiving work. If this offense can just get a little bit better with their improved offensive line, new offensive coordinator, new culture, Devin Singletary could be of value in some circumstances, but not all the time. Even though he was a top 24 running back last season, he's not going to be given nearly enough opportunity to justify rostering him outside of being a handcuff for Damian Pierce. Moving on to the final couple of options, we have other upside, you know, kind of handcuff options. If in fact something happens to Miles Sanders, Chuba Hubbard could be a value because we have seen Frank Wright not only help running backs get to that next level, but additionally have two relevant running backs within this one backfield. I mean, you go back to the days where it's Marlon Mack, Naeem Hines, or even Jonathan Taylor, Naeem Hines. You can have multiple running backs within a Frank Wright offense, find value, and why not with Chuba Hubbard? could very easily be the case within a run-first approach within this offense. Now, the final running back I wanted to mention is Tank Bigsby. Again, he's going to be in the rotation. He is going to siphon away some touches from Travis Etienne. Again, I see him primarily as someone that is a handcuff. Until otherwise noted, he could end up becoming this year's James Robinson, where he's getting a lot of utilization, and they kind of you know, allow Travis Etienne to work in on some plays, but mainly be a guy that is a change of pace back, alongside of Tank Bigsby. We'll have to wait and see, but at this current moment in time, my 50th ranked running back sits here in the I tier to close out today's video as Tank Bigsby. Thank you everybody for watching. That covers everything for the running back ranking tiers for the 2023 season. Yes, I, I said it. I'm going to talk for a while. I got to be concise, but I got to go ahead and give you guys the stats because they matter. Thank you everybody for watching. Again, do not forget to check out Underdog Fantasy. I've done a lot of research this offseason, whether it's the draft guide, the rankings, all of that, all you got to do is sign up, use code Andrew, make a first-time deposit minimum of $10. You get my rankings, my draft guide this offseason, and additional rankings every single Sunday morning throughout the entire of the season from my email to yours. So take advantage of the opportunity on hand. Last but definitely not least, also be sure to check out andrewkurikoffshop.com right now. Link down in the description and pinned to the first comment of the comment section and support the channel. Besides me repping greetings and salutations every day on this channel for the entirety of the 2023 season, you can do that with stylish, comfortable, and high quality clothing like you guys can see on screen. Travel over to the website. If it's something that interests you, of course, take advantage of the opportunity and continue to support the channel. I thank you very much. Until tomorrow, we'll be talking about the wide receiver position. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you guys. Peace.